Welcome to the Kelly Green Hour here on the Always Next Year podcast. I'm your host, LJ Harrell, joined by Shane. Shane, how's it going? I am wonderful. I wonder why. I'll tell everybody. I told everyone in the last podcast show, and I'm going to say it, a dog shit job, quit, dollar in the swear jar, worth it, mm, don't even care. How much do you owe for the swear jar? Uh, we've crossed the threshold of the first donation. <laughs> Thanks to Steve yesterday, or two days ago, whenever we recorded. Interesting. But. Nice. Well, I know we've taken a few weeks off from uh, the Kelly Green Hour, but we're less than two weeks away from the NFL draft, and the Eagles are still the top team in the city. You know, case in point, Eagles chance at every sporting event and every game that happens. You're either, the only even one. Ha- it even happened in D.C. during the Phillies Nationals game. All right, that I'm okay with. If you want to do that on a, on a stadium takeover for a – Otherwise, garbage sports town. I'm cool with that. But, uh, yeah, not not on home. Uh, not at home. Well, unless we're getting our ass kicked. If it's 15 to 1, say what the hell you want. Yeah, that, that, uh, that Phillies game the other night was, um, wasn't fun. Um, but we're going we're gonna to stick with the Eagles um, for this topic. We're gonna, it's, since it's been a while, we're going to take it back you know, a week or two. We're going to start with the Jordan Howard trade. It was a trade that the Eagles had to make. They needed a running back. Uh, you can't go into the season with... Um, with Adams and Clement and Smallwood. Smallwood and Sproles if he decides to come back. You know, you cannot come in with that group at the running back position. It's not good enough. You know, I believe the reason why the Eagles lost the Carolina game and the reason why the Eagles lost the Tennessee game, Doug Peterson didn't have any confidence in his running backs to give them the football to, 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 to win games, to bruise it down the stretch, to take time off the clock, to get the three, four, five yards at a time to be able to get first downs. I'm not saying Jordan Howard is going to be that guy, but he's better than the current group of running backs we have right now. So I am a fan of him. I'm a fan of getting him over here. Um, he's not... I We loved Laggart. Like, for, for what this offense needed and for the way that Doug coaches and the way that he chooses to finish out games, like, Laggart was the guy. He was a damn load. You know, and he was athletic. You know, he wasn't just a big guy. You know, he could run outside the tackles too. Um, Jordan Howard, he's a downhill back, but he's streaky. You know, he'll have those handful of he's dude. He's very much like his former Bears teammate in Alshon Jeffrey. Both guys have the ability to go off for a month and then go cold for six weeks after. Um, So that terrifies me. So I hope that we find a way to utilize him that works and helps breed some consistency to him and to his game. But just like you said, they desperately need him to be a closer in the fourth quarter uh, of these football games for Doug in this offense. Yeah, and the Eagles aren't done it with the running back position. They are going to add pieces. Um, you know, <laughs> going into camp, they're going to have six, they could have six, seven, eight running backs to battle it out. Whoever the top three are, that's who we're taking into the season. Um, the one, I mean, looking at Jordan Howard's numbers, in his three years, he's averaged 1,123 yards, eight touchdowns, 24 and 24 catches. Now, that's not a lot. He didn't really do that much, and that's something that we're going to need out of the running back in this offense. He averaged 4.3 yards per carry, but when it, that's a little you know, skewed a little bit, I think. His average yards per carry from his rookie year in 2016 went from 5.2 to 4.1 to 3.7 yards per carry. Is that a concern for you? It is. I do question, I, I always kind of question his role with each year in Chicago there. You know, I felt like they started kind of phasing him out of that system, you know, and, and he started becoming just a one-trick guy where it was it was super telegraphed as to what was going to happen when he was getting, when he was in the backfield. You know, and that to me became the problem more so than what I believe he could do. Um, I, I didn't look at their line play last year, like the overall numbers and successes of that line. Um, well, they you know, didn't do anything against the Eagles in the playoff game. They certainly didn't do shit against the Eagles in the playoff game. But, um, you know, but I do. I, again, I you have to find ways to to not be so telegraphed. And I felt as though, for the most part, when, when he was in the backfield, you knew exactly what you were getting there. And, you know, when Matt Nagy came in to be the coach of the Bears, he had Tariq Cohen. And Tariq Cohen became the go-to back for the Bears. And what they want to do, they, they, they like to spread the field. They want to get the ball out of He's Trub- more elusive and versatile. And it, yeah, they want to get the ball out of Trubisky's hands as fast as possible. And again, I mentioned earlier, he's aver- he only averaged twenty four. Jordan Howard only averaged twenty four catches a year in his first three years. So they were going to go with somebody that can catch the ball and that can block. 
Um, I'm not saying Howard's a bad black bo- uh, a bad blocker, <laughs> excuse me. Um, but that was somebody they, they didn't trust. You know, and you think about it, there's only two running backs that have more rushing yards than Jordan Howard since he's come into the league. Zeke and um, Zeke Elliott and Todd Gurley. You know, that that says that shows the type of talent he has. It's gonna come down to A, will Doug Peterson commit to the run? And B, will the offensive line be healthy? That's gonna be key. Jason Peters, yes, he's coming back, but we know he never he's finished, start to finish, he only played a full five games. He came out of every other game. Um the center position, Kelsey is back. Obviously, he always talks about or it's always rumored that he's going to retire after every year. Um, Brandon Brooks, we who knows know. when he's going to be healthy enough. He, you know, I follow him on Twitter, and he's always talking about working out, and he says he's going to be ready for the season. If he's ready for the season, that more power to him because that wasn't that was not a, 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 a big guy with an Achilles like that. Yeah, that's not an easy injury to come back from. Um, and, and Lane Johnson's the best right tackle in football. I don't care what anybody says. You know, there's a stat out there. Um, Demarcus Lawrence just got a contract extension from the Cowboys. In Couldn't nine games against Lane Johnson, he has a big fat zero sacks. Yep, I saw that too. And you know that is awesome. You know when you think, all right, give give Demarcus Lawrence all that money when he's got to go up against the best right tackle in football. We saw what him and Peterson were able to do against Khalil Mack, against Von Miller. You know a couple years back against and against Demarcus Lawrence, they they make it look easy out there. And we all know it's not easy for tackles against the likes of those type of pass rushers. Yeah, for me, of the two concerns there, specifically because of the age and the injury concern, obviously with Brandon Brooks, I would be more concerned uh, with Jordan Howard in terms of the health and overall productivity of the offensive line. Doug Peterson, I do think that when he has the right tools in the running game, he has shown after... Who called him out for it after... Like a, was, it, was it Lagarit? Uh, somebody, Lagarit actually, Lagarit was real shockingly after he got zero carries against the Chiefs. He didn't come out and ba- ba- you know bash anybody. He just you know he kind of came out and was just like yeah we need to run the ball more, and that's what I, the offensive line was saying. It. So that's what all right. I couldn't remember who it was. I knew someone within the locker room or a, or a group within the locker room had come to Doug and said hey. This needs to be an integral part of this team and this offense and in, in order for it to work. Against the Chargers the next week, exactly. Um, you know, so I don't, I don't fear Doug and his play calling. You know, I, I know at times we all get frustrated um, at, at some of it, but for the most part, my concern right now with Jordan Howard being Jordan Howard is who is blocking for him. You mentioned it. Peterson's constantly off the field. Brooks is coming back from an injury. We have an unknown spot on the line, pretty much. I love um, Yeah, and uh, you know, then you mentioned again, you know, Kelsey with the constant retirement talks. There's always that question of like, how emotionally invested are you right now? Can you be here? Yeah, and do they have trust? You know, do they trust Vitae? Um They gave Sam Alu a contract extension, so he's going to be the left guard at least for now. Wisniewski's still available in free agency. Um, I love Wiz. Well, we'll just wait for Jason Peters to get hurt. Inevitably, and then we'll sign Wiz too. Jordan we'll... Mayalata, what's he going to do? Everybody says he was hurt too at the end of the year, I, which is hilarious. I don't know how you get hurt hurts. in practice. Um, everybody says that he has progressed, and he, he, you know, Ross Tucker always talks about how he thinks he's not going to be a good left tackle. He's going to be an All Pro left tackle. I hope he's right. I, I hope he's right too. And that was somebody that they they got in the sixth seventh round, round, seventh round, seventh round. Um, so that that would be really good for the Eagles, especially on the tight. A team that is really up against, well, was up against the cap. Somehow the best Genius. general manager in all of sports was able to find a way to work around $43 million. They went from $20 million under to about twenty to $25 million over. I don't know how you finagle that kind of Over the cap number. to under the cap. That kind of swings insanity. He, well, you know, um, Ruben Frank put out a piece that they put in dummy years, which I didn't even know was possible. <laughs> it helps with comp picks. It helps with, uh, it's, I don't know how he does it. And how he does, and it, hey, apparently fine. it's legal, so yeah, <laughs> so I'll take it. But yeah, I mean the best. The Eagles have the best coach in the city. Have the best general manager in the city. <laughs> Who's a better coach than than Peterson? No, no, I was for the Peterson thing. The Peterson is the best coach in the city. You don't think um, who who would you give as the best general manager? Fletcher? No, don't even hell say hell no, not Fletcher. Clentac? You are damn right. It's easy when you can be like, here, oh, you're the best player? Oh, I'll yeah. give you $330 million. His job is easier than, than <laughs> how it is. I'm not lying. But, but, 
But they still need pitching, and he they if he needs to go out. Yeah, and they then, don't want to pay the luxury tax. Yet. I know, I know this. I know this isn't a Phillies contact, but in order for Clentac to approach um, Howie Roseman, he still they still have pieces on holes on that team that they need to fill. Yes, the Eagles do too, but he also has a championship within the last two years. So yeah, well, Howie I, has a little bit of leeway. I have to shut down now because there is no championship right now. <laughs> yet, yet we are in the window, but. Look, we'll revisit this conversation when the Phillies inevitably win a World Series in the next five years. I hope to God they do. If they don't win one, you might. I will not handle it well. All right. um, So when you look at the Eagles offense, especially at the running game, what is one thing that they struggle? Oh, sorry. I was literally just about to sneeze. Sorry. (laughs) If I sneeze into the mic, man, I'm sorry. Go ahead and say it. When when we talk about the Eagles running game, where do they struggle most when it comes to the running game? No, it's just consistency all around, man. Short yardage. My, my, you know, Adams. How some, the hell can you be that big and be that soft? It's, it's amazing that. What was that stat third, last year? Oh, he was like 0 for. for like 19 or something. 0 for 19 on third and fourth and two and shorter. Yeah. That's, something ins- like that. that's ridiculous. Well, Jordan Howard on third and fourth and two or less converting 74% of the time. And I don't think the Bears offensive line is better than the Eagles offensive line. It's got to be something that the runner does. That that you yeah. know when we talk about Adams, how he's so big, he should be able to run well, there was forward. Such a vision they, problem last year with every Clement. back. Clement, I don't know what was going on with him last year. He was a different dude. You know, and and when they're gonna when they put, it says a lot when they put Darren Sproles, the smallest running back you have, who runs the hardest. You know, of I all know, the running right? backs, they put him that in on fourth and short. You, there's an issue there, and I think Jordan Howard is definitely gonna help. As I mentioned, he converts seventy. Four percent of the of of the carries. All right. So over the last five years, the Eagles' leading rusher, the Eagles, <laughs> the, lead, I know. the Eagles' leading rusher has hasn't rushed for more than eight hundred yards. How absurd is that? By the way, I've been holding a sneeze in forever. This is not coming out. This is killing me. <laughs> um, yeah, it's that's a stat that you think of a professional football team. Like, how do you not have in five years have a running back go for over eight hundred? Now, obviously, as I mentioned before, the Eagles are going to add to the running back position. Will Howard get over 800 yards this year? You know, obviously injury permi- injury yeah. lot permitting and all that. Um, see, I don't know. The one thing I would say that you have in Howard that you didn't have in the acquired Jay Ajayi was the fact that Ajayi was a constant concern with those knees and with that health. I don't have that concern with Jordan Howard. So I do believe that you can lean on him a little bit more than what you would have leaned on in a Jay Ajayi type running back. Like this is the, he's not a bell cow back like we talk about, um, but he's, he's close and he's the closest that he's, that Doug's going to have. Um, yeah. So for me, it, it, I do think that he's, he can approach the, you know, 900, a thousand yards. Um, but I do think a huge, huge, huge part of it is one, if Sproles decides to come back, like they're going to find him his touches. And I don't know that I agree with it anymore. Um, you know, it, Wendell Smallwood's Wendell Smallwood. I they do love think him for some reason. They do really love him. And he why. actually, he didn't, look, he closed out the year okay last year. Um, you know, I also, pretty cool to not see him in an Eagles uniform again, but that is what it is. Um, they do like Adams, but they couldn't trust him in the back end of that season. And that concerns me, and he's got health issues. So what they do in the draft is going to tell me how much we can expect from Jordan Howard because they are going to, they're going to find it in the middle rounds there and that what third or fourth round uh, yeah. they're going to tackle a running back there. I'm glad you brought up the draft. Nice transition. Um, Connor and I put out our Eagle seven round mock drafts a couple weeks back and hopefully next week we're going to, you know, do a, a short show together talking about the draft. Um, I, I figures that after I put my mock draft out, the Eagles trade for a running back <laughs> because I had them taking Josh Jacobs in the first round. Which is an orgasmic thought, by the way. Um, I th- I'm an Alabama fan too, so like having somebody of his ilk in the running back who can do it all at the running back position next to Carson Wentz, but it's not going to happen. It now. pains me so much to want so many Alabama players because <laughs> they're so good. They're Reds- so good. The Redskins are just. If you went to Alabama and played defense, you're going to be a Redskin. That's <laughs> At some point, yes. pretty much. <laughs> they have like six starters on their defense that played for Alabama. Um, how much you just kind of brought it up, you know, quickly? How much does it change the way they look at the draft? And you know, it's as I mentioned, it's less than two weeks. Nashville, Tennessee, 
They have a third. They have the twenty fifth overall pick. They have two second round picks. Don't have a third. Um, what type of impact will the trade for Jordan Howard have on where the Eagles select a running back? Will they select the running back? Do they take in the first round? So I do. They are still going to take uh, a running back. I, I think probably in that fourth round pick. Um, it would not shock me if they moved out of the first round. Um, I think they move up now. So see, I don't. I don't know. Either that, or it wouldn't shock me if they move one of those second rounds to move back into the third, and then get another fourth or something or a fifth. Um, you know, whatever it would be. Um, I would have pegged for one of those second round picks would have been a running back prior to prior to the Jordan Howard. Um, but I do think that that's going to slot back to that, that fourth round now. Um, you know, and, and I mean, you mention it all the time. Rob mentions it all the time, like building from the inside out. You know, to me, I am I'm offensive line, defensive line. That is what I want those first three picks geared towards. Yeah, I, now I see the Eagles going, definitely going offensive or defensive line in the first yeah. round. You know, there's a lot of talk of them possibly trading up for like an Ed Oliver, which would Look, be... Look, if they do that, I'm cool. Ridiculous. <laughs> Put Ed Oliver next to Fletcher yeah. Cox. And, yeah, it's and unfair. With Malik Jackson, like, oh, yeah. it's it's ridiculous what the Eagles are going to do. And obviously, they're going to look to re- to finding a replacement or somebody that can groom under Jason Peters because we think this is Peters last year, but I've been saying that for like the last three years. Three years. So, who knows? I don't know. We also think that my lot is going to be there. Yeah, that's very true. Um, so, but, but we know the one thing that Howie likes to do, Peterson likes to do, because they're all from the Andy Reid tree, draft linemen. It's easier for linemen to come in and to and to start right yeah. away than it is for a running back, for a receiver, um, to for maybe even for a linebacker to, to come in, learn a defense, learn an offense, learn a scheme. A, line, a lineman, all you got to say, defense lineman, go get the quarterback. Offensive <laughs> lineman, keep them from hitting your quarterback. You know, I don't know. The offensive line for for the Eagles is is fairly intricate. They got so many poles and so many. St- it's well, it helps when a lot of those poles are players that are like Jason Kelsey. I don't know how the heck he does. He's fast as hell. He's ridiculous like, getting up to the second level. It, it's it's awesome the way he's able to to move. Um, he's not you know he, he's big, but he's not big. Yeah, and and that kind of helps him in terms of what the Eagles want him to do um, on the offensive line. There's a lot of talk that the Eagles are fine at the linebacker position. Elliot Shore Park says, eh, they're fine. Elliot Shore Park is a moron, first of all. I agree. They have... No offense if I won Ni- the for WIP. You're a great guy, I'm sure. They have Nigel Bradham. And then? And then... <laughs> what, Kim Ogruje Hill? Like, LJ4 like, is, a, like, is a special eh, teamer. No. Eh, like... No, they need then, the tackle. They need a linebacker in the worst way. And the Raiders are getting all the linebackers that I really would have would have wanted. Like Brandon Marshall, um, who who could, who played for Denver. Um obviously the Jets got um um DJ Mosley. CJ Mosley, sorry, yeah. CJ Mosley. Yeah, but, they paid him an ass load. Yeah, money. they paid him a lot of money. Um you know, so the Eagles definitely have to to look at you know, upgrading that linebacker position. You can't have Nigel Rowan playing 100% of the snaps like he did last year. I do think that you can find linebacker help, you know, especially with the fact that, like, how often do we have more than two linebackers on the field? Like, Well, that's because we don't have linebackers. So, right, but it kind of, like, when you can slide up Malcolm Jenkins and he can cover the tight ends and stuff like that, not that it's ideal. My but, thing is, if, if Schwartz has the personnel, maybe he will put more linebackers out on the field. Because when you don't have the personnel, you don't have the players that fit your scheme or the players that are good enough. Like I don't want to see Nate Jerry on the field ever again. No one does. Although and Drew Gray, Drew Gray Hill be can be our backup kicker. <laughs> I'll be honest. Like I do feel like I find similar amounts of joy when Nate Jerry gets on the field, and I have to see your reaction as to what you see when Aaron Altair or Andrew Knapp dress for a Phillies game. Like there are very similar reactions of just complete despising. I mean, Altair was the best pitcher the other Altair night. was the absolute best pitcher that <laughs> night. Go ahead, throw him in the closers roll. I don't give a damn. 90 miles an hour? Hell yes. That was crazy. The high cheese on Dozier? Dozier's a dog shit hitter, though. Um, but yeah, so when you look at the Eagles roster, they are the sixth oldest team in the NFL right now. They added Deshaun Jackson, who's 31. Malik Jackson, who's 29. Bringing back Jason Peters, who's 37, 38. Um, does that concern you going into this season? Because the Eagles are at a point where... They have a very small window. Your quarterback's on a rookie deal. You need to win a Super Bowl until you have to pay him like three bajillion dollars. <laughs> and you don't have any cap room, even though 
Somehow, we know how we will figure it out. Somehow he will. I do trust Howie. Um, but the age thing, yeah, in the NFL more so than anything else. Like, being in that conversation of the older teams in football, that's always going to concern me. The one thing I will say is, I know I knocked Deshaun, Zach, uh, Deshaun Jackson for his ability to stay on the football field. I do trust him to be there for 14 14 plus games a season. You know, I think that some of the lower body nagging stuff, he does keep himself in really good shape. Um, Jackson, I trust 100% um, uh, on the line there. And then my big concern, if you're going to talk about aging pieces, is the entire is the offensive line. You know, like we already know Jason Peters is going to break down what's behind him. We already know uh, that Kelsey's constantly considering retirement. Uh, Brooks, you know, coming off that kind of an injury as an offensive lineman. That concerns me. So, yeah, I mean, that is a giant, giant red flag for me. And it it puts a ton of pressure on Carson Wentz, on that offense, on Doug Peterson to succeed right now. And then if you look at the safety position, you have McLeod, who's coming back from injury, but he's also 29-ish, something like that. Malcolm Jenkins is 31, but he never comes off the field. So he's like 35. (laughs) I don't know what his offseason regimen is, but please... Give it to everybody else because he is always on the field. You know, the the Eagles did bring in Andrew Sandejo as the third safety. I'd much rather have him than uh, Corey Graham. But they're also going to need to bring in a safety. Could they go safety or cornerback first round? There's so many questions for the Eagles. I can't wait for this draft in two weeks. I'm I'm probably skipping football practice that night. Um, I guess I'm going to use a sick day. The event, the Avengers open up that night, and I'm going to skip the Avengers that Thursday because that's going to be like a thousand bajillion people there to watch it. So I'll just sit down and watch the NFL draft. I'm so looking forward to that. All right, so beyond the draft, beyond Jordan Howard, there's all the talk of will Wentz get an extension this year or will they wait till after the year? Give me a couple pros and cons to doing it now or doing it after this upcoming season or even during the season. Yeah, look, I think the biggest thing is the fact that, you know, if you're, I do think you can save a little bit of money paying him right now, in theory, because I I personally, I think he's going to have an explosive year. And if he's got a running back, mm -hmm. then you are, that's making Howie's next job of finagling contracts that much He's going to have something almost similar to his 2017 year. Yeah, and and if that happens, like, holy shit, you're going to wish you paid him in this, you know, in this offseason or, you know early on in the season, don't let him get that MVP type number um, because then those dollars are going to be driven right the hell up and he's going to get what he wants. Um, you know, and with a team that's aging like this and with a team that, that doesn't have as many assets that are going to be here, you mentioned that the window is small. Um, you know, having a quarterback at a, at a high dollar, my biggest fear is seeing the Aaron Rodgers situation of Aaron Rodgers is always going to be the best player on the field and he's never going to win again. He's just never going to win again. I don't ever want that to happen to Carson Wentz in Philadelphia. So me personally, I'd be paying him this offseason, seeing, you know, seeing what you can't work out in a team, not team-friendly deal, but certainly friendlier than what it would be next offseason. And you'd have to think that Howie was creating a bunch of cap space. Oh, absolutely. Possibly, the, you know, they could be talking now, and obviously we're not hearing anything Howie's, but we haven't heard anything from Howie, which makes me think, whether it's, whether it's with Carson or whether it's at the draft, something big is probably going to happen. He's going to do something that we're going to be like, so that's why he was quiet, you know? Because yeah. how he always works. Every time he's quiet, I'm like, <laughs> all right, man. How he works in silence. The world knows. If we haven't heard your name for a little bit, something's about to go down. All right, so let's, um, when it comes to my, you know, my thoughts on Carson Wentz, you're right. Get it done now because if he has the year that we're anticipating, they're going to, they're going to, you're going to give him way more than yeah. what, what you could give him right now. Um, obviously, the the cons are could get hurt again. Could know? get hurt, or he could regress again. He, you know, he not could, again. which he was hurt last year. He was, and he was playing with, with. He rushed back, playing with a bad back. Or his knee wasn't hundred percent. You know, this is an off season where we don't know. Obviously, know where he's at with his back injury, but he should be able to work with his receivers, take him out to North Dakota, do something, yeah. and you know, get that chemistry now so that you're not doing it in preseason during camp. You already have it, so when game one starts. Whoever you're facing, game one, you're hitting the road, you're hitting the ground running, and um, you know you're going to start hopefully that run back to the Super Bowl. Um, let's talk some NFL news that had, has come out over the last couple of weeks. The new challenge rule. 
You can obviously this is um, in response to what happened in the Rams Saints NFC Championship game. You are allowed to now. They didn't add challenges, so you only get the two, and you get a third if you win them both. Offensive pass interferences and defensive pass interferences. Is it good or bad for the game? So they needed to do something, but there is offensive and defensive pass interference on every goddamn play. So my whole thing is, how how can you be? 100% consistent in those decisions, knowing that something happens. Like, what's the line of egregiousness there that you're like, this warrants a flag? Does it have to be as bad as that playoff game? Or can it just be a ticky-tacky thing where you're like, well, technically, by the rules, this is pass interference. So to me, having to use a challenge on that, and now having to think that way as a coach, to say, they didn't give me another challenge, just like you mentioned, I need to know, is this worth it right now? Or is it I think not? we're I think we're gonna see in preseason a lot of these Me challenges too, to, to start to get the vibe and to feel. get the vibe to get to see where the refs are coming from. Now yeah. the refs aren't the greatest refs, <laughs> NFL refs aren't the greatest, so we'll see where that comes from. But I do think in preseason, just like we saw those all the penalty flags for roughing the passer, everything like we saw for every and then the season started and it was like oh well, we forgot until Michael Bennett got that dumb call on him against <laughs> Minnesota. Um, but yeah, I, I mean. Something need, you mentioned it. Something needed to be done. Yeah, I'm glad it's a response, and you want that. Yeah, you don't want them to just sit on their hands. You thought a lot of people thought they would sit on their hands, give it a couple months, and people would forget about it. Yeah, the Saints weren't allowing that to happen. New Orleans didn't even watch the Super Bowl, which I don't. I wouldn't have watched it either if, if I was. I'd have been pretty that, pissed. That that Super Bowl was. Um, I don't think they missed anything. The Super Bowl kind of sucked. Yes. Um, but they rewatched their Super Bowl victory over the Colts. That's what the that's what Saints. That's hilarious. Did. Um. Now, obviously, so petty. the name of this segment is the Kelly Green Hour. Jeffrey Lurie thinks by 2020, the Eagles could get the Kelly Green jerseys back as an alternative. I'd much rather have them than the All Blacks or whatever that they wear for Color Rush. Um, <laughs> I'm for it. You're for it? Hell yeah, I'm for it. I want them back full time. I want them back full time, too. My question is, he talks about the helmet. helmet like, yeah. But how do all these other teams? Exactly. What, the, 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 um, the, Packers, the have, Packers, the Steelers. Yep. Like, um, how do all these other teams that are able to wear the the, the Rams? Like what? Falcons. But the Eagles can't. Like this, it makes zero sense. I'm, I, I have, I'm confused as to the reasoning. But I Who hope knows? that the Eagles get this done because I mean, I have a Kelly Green Jordan Brown jersey. I, would, I, I got a Randall. Rob's got a Randall. I would love to go out and purchase more Kelly Green jerseys. <laughs> Because that's Same. what they are going to wear. And I want them to go back to that. The, I like the, the eagle that they have, but the old school eagle. Oh, I love it. With the, 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 the holding the football. Yep. That's what we need to go back to. Yeah, I dig it. It's so crazy. And, and like I heard this on sports radio um, a couple weeks ago, right? When this conversation was super relevant. Is there another city that like admires their throwback uniforms and their throwback eras the Philly, in the those, ways that those what, Philly powder blue? Like, they're the sexiest jerseys on the planet outside of the Kelly Greens. I'm like, holy shit, we need these. Um, and, and like, it just go one. We're a great fan base. We're awesome, and we appreciate all the things that came before us. For appreciate those of us history. who are, yeah, like we understand what went into building these organizations and franchises. And something as as small to other you know, other uh, other cities and fan bases as a uniform color or or what, like we that brings back an era of tenacity for us that defense to sit there and think about that that excites me already. Yeah, I I really do like like you said. I hope it happens. Hope Lori's able to get twenty. Imagine the Eagles win the Super Bowl this year. They open up the season next year Thursday night at home at the link with the Kelly Green uniforms. I oh my like, god, that would be amazing. Full chub already. All right, so before before we before we finish off this segment, let's the preseason schedule for the Eagles came out, um, and there's a familiar name on the uh, list. <laughs> week one, they host the Titans. Uh, they get Marcus Mariota. Granted, nobody's going to play in that game. Week two, this is where the NFL missed a huge opportunity to make it week three. No, to make it the Jaguars coming to Philly. Wow. You want nobody go, likes to go to preseason games as it is. If you made that week two game against the Jaguars in Philly. Guarantee sellout for a preseason game <laughs> just so you can see Nick Foles. Yeah, so first of all, you said it. No one gives a damn about preseason. Like, I mean, no I still watch, no I, so do I, I still watch I every know. snap, even into the fourth quarter when Luis Perez is going to be playing quarterback for the Eagles. Which is hilarious, by the way. So my buddy at work texted me that. 
Um, he's just like, hey, the AF folded. Um, just so you know, we got this quarterback. It's like, thanks, Dave. He was, the co- he was the quarterback for my favorite AF team, just saying. There you the go. Birmingham Iron. All, all eight games of it. Um, what a damn shame, man. Um, but yeah, look, I'm, I can't lie. I am excited to see see Nick Foles. Uh, Nick Foles versus Carson Wentz for at least two series. For probably. two series, that's it. Uh, week three, the Eagles get the Ravens. They're going to practice again. Or the Ravens are going to come to town for that week. Yep. They're going to have joint practices. Do you like joint practices? Um, for yes and no. Um, you know, I think that it depends on how good the coaches on the other side are. Because I do think that like there is still a brotherhood in the NFL of like, hey, what what types of things do you do? Like, I don't think that people are t- purposely like Belichick. I wouldn't trust for shit. I mean, the Patriots did come here a couple years back. Two years ago. Three years ago? I think it was three years ago. Three years ago. Um, I mean, Harbaugh, um, Harbaugh is, you know, he coached here. He knows. Yeah. He, like he knows. I, um, I think it's interesting, you know. Uh, so I'm not totally, totally against it. But I just, there has to be value for both cities and both, um, you know, both teams. So if those coaches work well together, great. I don't think Belichick came since Chip was here. I think it was one of Chip's last years. Oh, yeah, that is true. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And then they finish off with the Jets. We won't see Mosley. We won't see Bell. We won't see Darnold. Like that's the game where nobody plays. Um, yeah. I'm saying three and one. No I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing preseason predictions already. Pre-draft. Pre-draft. Pre-camp. <laughs> Pre-camp. Pre. Pre everything. Yeah, I dig it. Three and one. I like it. <laughs> um, no, but it was good to get some Eagles talking. Um, and as, as, we, as I mentioned before, we're just going to ramp up with the draft in two weeks. Hopefully next week, Connor and I are able to get, do a do a draft segment. Whether we just talk Eagles. Whether we do a, a full first round mock draft, yo, he's so Canadian. I love it. Is he? Yeah, it's uh, it's so great. I had so much fun on our on our crossing border segment with him. <laughs> so that so hopefully we'll, we'll we'll definitely put that out. Um, yeah, Twitter. What's your Twitter? Uh, at Shane underscore Mead. Uh, mine's at Algerhero fifty four. If you want to shoot Shane me the 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 oh, always the um the podcast at A and Y podcast that, that Twitter. If you want to shoot us any uh, questions. Football related, I, I have no, I can talk hours and hours. Yeah, and, and if you want to do guest segments with us, by the way, we are starting to do that more. Um, I've, I'm putting together a TJ's One of Us one right now. L will literally sit in front of the mic for weeks on end talking Eagles football with you guys. So if you want to be part of the conversations, we want to include you. So just DM us and we'll get you all the details. Yep, we will. That's it for the Kelly Green Hour. Thank you for listening here on the Always Next Year podcast.